Excellency Philippe Yacinto Nusi, President of the Republic of Mozambique, I request protocol to escort His Excellency. <clears throat> On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Philippe Yacinto Nusi, President of the Republic of Mozambique, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Dennis Francis, chairperson of the session of uh, the General Assembly of the United Nations, Engineer Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Heads of States and Government, distinguished representatives of member states, esteemed leaders of the system of the United Nations Organization, distinguished invited guests, Ex Excellency. I begin my remarks by extending on behalf of the people of Mozambique our heartfelt condolences to the peoples of the sisterly nations of Morocco and Libya for the tragedies that befell these two sister African countries. I take this opportunity to, to reiterate the Mozambican people and government's gratitude for the unanimous vote for the election of Mozambique as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Our participation at the Security Council has enabled us to share our experience in peace building and national reconciliation, thus contributing to us fostering international peace and security. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, in September 2015 at this very hall, we adopted the Sustainable Development Goals that encapsulate the Agenda 2030. As leaders, we committed on behalf of our peoples the commitment to reduce poverty in 16 key areas and establish a better world for all without leaving no one behind. The progress report that we considered yesterday at the high level panel shows clearly that the world continues to be faced with various interconnected crises that undermine the delivery of the Agenda 23rd. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, natural disasters arising from climate change and armed conflicts, including terrorism, violent extremism, causes millions of people to continue living under poverty without adequate food and without access to uh, education, uh, food and health services. It is true that the adversities I have referred are a cause for regression in progress that we were making in the implementation of Agenda 2030 since 2015. However, the main reason for lack of success of this agenda remains the absence of trust and solidarity between those who have a lot and those who have little or almost nothing at all. Even among those who have a lot, rather than building trust and solidarity, they spend their resources uh, in investing in a competition fueled by trust. Therefore, I commend Your Excellency Dr. Dennis Francis, chairperson of this session, for the theme you have suggested to us on rebuilding peace, revitalizing global solidarity. It is a critical theme to realize Agenda 2030 on sustainable development towards peace, progress, and prosperity for sustainability of uh, humanity. Your Excellencies, in my statement, I'll try to focus attention on peace and security, counterterrorism, climate change, energy transition, blue economy and environmental conservation in tandem with the theme of this General Assembly. On peace and security, on peace and security, 
various regions of the world uh, grappling with the vicious circle of armed conflicts and instability, particularly in, Ar in Africa. Thousands of uh, precious lives are lost. The number of refugees and internally displaced persons have increased to more than 50% in the last year, despite multilateral efforts of several peace initiatives at the United Nations Security Council level and regional organization war in Ukraine and other regions prevail and endanger peace, security, and global economy. My own country, Mozambique, experienced cycle of armed conflicts, sometimes triggered by forces alien to national interests. But its settlement has been possible only based on constructive dialogue founded on trust and mutual respect. That is how we adopted the new uh, Provincial Decentralization Act, uh, now under implementation uh, and in August 2019, we signed the Peace and Reconciliation Accord, also known as Maputo Accord. In June this year, we closed the last camp of RENAMO, a formerly armed opposition party, marking the conclusion of the disarmament and demobilization phase. The crucial phase that follows is the reintegration of ex-combatants into the society, including payment of pensions, although not provided for by law. I would like to express our gratitude as this process counts on the support of the United Nations and other multilateral and bilateral partners, terrorists, excellencies, while we seek to close one chapter of the peace and national reconciliation process, Mozambique is confronted by the nefarious phenomenon of terrorism, particularly in Cabo Delgado province in, northern, in the north of the country. In March this year, during Mozambique's rotational chairpersonship of the Security Council, we had the opportunity to share at length our experience of to countering terrorism. On one hand, our st strategy focuses on strengthening combat operations by the Mozambican Defense and Security Forces with an initial support of the Rwandan contingent and SADC multilateral force, uh, also uh, named SAMIM. We have been achieving tangible success on the ground, though terrorists continue to create terror and fear in sporadic way in isolated village. With the improvement of safety and tranquility, populations have been returning in large numbers to their home areas, resuming their normal life. This is a pioneer experience of combining bilateral and multilateral interventions. It is also an example of solution of African problems, first by the Africans themselves. However, the issue arising is the need for a substantial support to these countries that uh, in a direct manner uh, countering terrorism with us in Mozambique in order to uh, render the ongoing operation sustainable. At this juncture, the challenge is reconstruction of infrastructures and consolidation of social cohesion whose actions are uh, undertaken within the framework of Northern Region Resilience and Integrated Development Program, PRADIM, which counts on the support of partners. We would also like to uh, appeal uh, for your solidarity in this other component of uh, countering terrorism, climate change. Climate change constitutes the main crisis of mankind of this century. This is not a new discovery. Therefore, many species around this subject almost repeat themselves. For a number of decades ago, scientific evidence shows that our planet is at the eve of climate catastrophe. However, despite this evidence and commitments assumed yearly during various conferences on climate change, the situation has been aggravating. The same applies to 
conflicts, the cause for climate change is lack of uh, confidence or trust, solidarity associated with selfless, selflessness of some countries. Countries uh, that pollute the enriching of these countries is costing the price of disgrace for countries that contribute less with pollution that uh, coincident, coincidentally are the poorest country. As a consequence, heat waves, cyclones, floods, droughts, earthquakes, the rise of the sea level, uncontrolled fire and other extreme phenomena have become increasingly frequent all over the globe. In the case of Mozambique, due to its uh, geographic location, the country suffers cyclically of the devastating impact of natural disasters. The latest largest cyclones, I mean, Edai, Kenneth, and, Cred Kenneth, and Freddy, caused hundreds of losses of life, highly costly damages and losses to the tune of uh, billions of dollars. So far, we have not yet been able to recover just one third of damage recorded. Damage is recorded. However, support from partners have been well below the pledges and beyond the requirements. In many cases, when these assistance comes, partners have preferred to manage the funds outside agreed mechanisms with the government, causing overlaps in areas of programs which have little impact on the communities. As a consequence, substantial portion of funds uh, are spent in capacity building conferences uh, bureaucratic issues rather than allocating funds to affected people, which once again shows lack of trust and solidarity. As a way of mitigating the suffering of the people, we have been promoting domestic solutions towards consolidating a disaster management system with the involvement of public, private stakeholders, civil society, and local communities focusing on prevention and adaptation. This way, we have managed to reduce the impact of natural disasters, a fact that has uh, uh, merited the recognition of Mozambique at SADC, African Union and UN agencies. Mr. President, Excellencies, energy transition. Energy transition is a global imperative aimed at building more resilient and sustainable societies. However, we advocate that energy transition should be fair and must work as a launch pad to enable poor countries to find a window of opportunity in the diversification of the energy mix in order to consolidate their economic base. Energy transition requires large investments in power generation projects from clean sources. Once again, uh, we we'll invite the most in industrialized countries to be a more to show more solidarity by implementing their climate fund commitments. Mozambique is a regional reference for the diversity of its energy matrix that includes hydropower dams, in particular Kaurabasa, solar power stations and wind power uh, power stations and construction works for Mpanda Ukua are now underway. Last year, Mozambique joined the group of liquefied natural gas producing and exporting countries, an important step towards accelerating energy transition. Currently, the energy sector is dominated by hydropower with a capacity of 2,172 megawatts solar with namely with 95 megawatts gas, 441 megawatts, and diesel with 120 megawatts, with the possibility of operations of Temani thermal power station over the last quarter of 2024, with the capacity of 450 megawatts, and with a longer maturity cycle, the new Mpanda Nkua hydropower station with a capacity of 1,500 megawatts to be generated by 2030. 
likewise Mozambique bets on the development of blue economy to optimize resources from the extensive exclusive economic zone along the coastline of 2,700 kilometers environment conservation. We are also a country with a robust environment legislation that features major in international conventions, including the Paris Agreement, the Convention on the Protection of Endangered Spe Species Sites, among others, within the framework of the nationally determined commitment and this NCD in 20, 2021, Mozambique became the first African country to receive payments from the World Bank Fund for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. Last year, we launched a regional initiative on the sustainable management of the Mayombo Forest that culminated with the adoption of the Maputo Declaration, which was endorsed by 11 SADC member states. Mayombo Woodland is the largest tropical forest ecosystem of the world, where three, three species are predominant, which covers more than 2,574 kilometers along the Great Zambezi Basin across eight countries of Southern Africa. Under this initiative, which intends to project nature. We count on the support of bilateral and multilateral partners in conservation of the Miombo forest that can largely contribute to capture carbon on the planet. Excellencies, the challenges currently, currently faced by humanity are huge. However, solutions are within our reach. We, the leaders present here, have the historic responsibility of saving the planet for the benefit of future generations. The priority areas requiring urgent actions are clearly identified with the matrix of already defined solutions of which we highlight three. First, we need to renew the political will and redouble efforts to accelerate the achievement of targets of Agenda 2030, we do not need to come up with analytical speeches. The most important is action by all of us, by all of us with vigor and using available resources. Secondly, we have to intensify integrated policies with concrete actions to eradicate poverty, reduce inequality, preserve nature by empowering women the youth and other vulnerable groups. Thirdly, we must strengthen international partnership and multilateralism, taking the United Nations system as a basis. However, 78 years later, the world has experienced profound transformation that require deep reforms. I conclude by appealing for the existence of a more inclusive international financial system that is guided by transparent rules and mutually beneficial uh, rules where Africa participates as a partner that has a lot to offer to the world and not only a warehouse that supplies cheap commodities to countries or international multinationals, corporations that dominate the international market. To achieve this, we need to retrieve trust and mutual respect between states, which are the uh, sacred principles of the United Nations Charter. Only with trust and mutual respect and solidarity we can build a better world of peace, safe and sustainable that, sustainable that deliver welfare for all. Thank you very much for your attention. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Mozambique for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by